Alright, you are welcome back to introductory mathematical analysis A. Uh, we are still in chapter 13. We are still in chapter 13. And this time around, we will be covering chapter 13.3. Chapter 13.3. Alright, in chapter 13.3, we'll be dealing with concavity. Concavity. That is what we are dealing with in chapter 13.3, concavity. Alright, so again, we want to see the application of our derivatives, differentiation in determining the shape the shape of the graph or of the curve okay all right so in concavity uh, the first case we have in concavity is when the curve is concave upward or concave up concave upward or concave up so if you look at these cases here we have slope increasing which is concave up Another slope increasing, still concave up. And of course, this is the combination of this. So concave up, concave up. All right. So we need to use our derivative to determine this. All right. Let's uh, go to the second case. In the second case, uh, we want to determine where the uh, curve is concave downward. So we see here concave down, concave down, concave down. Okay. So they are, this is concave down, this is concave up. All right. Now, in order to know if the function is concave up, the derivative is increasing at that point. If the function is concave up, the derivative is increasing. If the derivative is increasing on that interval, then that function is concave up. That means if the first derivative, if the first derivative is increasing on the interval, then it is concave up. F is said to be concave down on that interval if the first derivative is decreasing on the interval so if the first derivative is decreasing on that interval then the function f is said to be concave down and at a point where we have concave up then concave down then there is a point of inflection there so f has an inflection point at a if it is continuous at a and changes concavity at A. So take note of these two conditions. Number one, it is continuous at A. Number two, it changes concavity at A. So number one, it is continuous at A. Number two, it changes concavity at A. So those are two points or those conditions, two conditions that make for a point of inflation. So if it is not continuous, then it is not a point of inflation. If it does not change concavity, it is also not a point of inflation. If any one of these two conditions is not satisfied, then it is not a point of inflation. Okay, all right. So now, how do we get uh, concavity? We need to find our second derivative, second derivative. And when the second derivative is greater than zero, then F. Don't forget we are using the second derivative to determine the nature of f. So then f is concave up on that interval. But if the second derivative is less than 0, is negative, then f is concave down on that interval. Okay, so in order to find concavity, you need to find the second derivative. Find your first derivative. And then also find the second derivative and determine where the second derivative is less than zero or is greater than zero. All right. Let's move. Okay, let's uh, determine this. 
testing for concavity given this function determine where the given function is concave up and where it is concave down where it is concave up and where it is concave uh, down okay so let's start with the first one the first one Okay, we are given in the first one y equals to x minus 1 raised to power 3 plus 1. Okay, so we want to find where it is concave up and where it is concave down. What do we do first? We find our first derivative, which is 3 x minus 1. Okay, that's the first derivative. Now we find the second derivative, which is 6 x minus 1. Okay, that's the second derivative. Now you need to know where this second derivative is greater than zero or is less than zero. In order to find this, all what you need to do, just equate the second derivative to zero. Equate that to zero. Okay, so you are going to be getting which implies 6x minus 1 equals to zero. This is equals to 0 then x equals to 1 okay take note that this is not uh, critical values don't forget critical values we use the first derivative to do so okay now here make an interval make an interval with this then we are going to have negative infinity to 1 and then we have 1 to positive infinity and then here you need to now check with the second derivative. Don't forget that. You check with the second derivative to know if it is greater than zero or it is less than zero. Okay, what is the second derivative again? This is the value of the second derivative. So I'm going to check. I'm going to check with the second derivative. This is the second derivative of x equals to 6x minus 1. Okay, so I pick a value in this interval. This is 1, 2, so there's a 0 here, okay? If I put 0 here, I will have 0 minus 1. That is minus 1, so this is positive. This is negative. Negative means it's less than 0. So this is less than 0. It means that this is concave uh, down. Okay, because it's less than 0, don't forget the rule. I go back to tell you. So if this is less than zero, it is concave down. If it is greater than zero, it's concave up. Okay. Now I pick a point here also. Pick a point here. I pick two. If I put two here, so I will be getting positive. So that means this is concave up. Okay. So at this interval, so concave, we have concave down at this interval and then we have concave up at this interval okay please that is it so that is how to find uh, where your function is concave up or concave down you use the second derivative don't forget that second derivative second derivative okay again we want to find this one uh, the B part of it. So now we have uh, B Y equals to S raised to power 2. Okay, again, we find the first derivative, which is 2X. We find the second derivative, which is what? Which is 2. Okay, we see this is 2 and uh, there's no more X there. So uh, there's no need to equate it to 0 to find x because we can't find x here. Okay, so we see that the second derivative is a constant 2. And this 2, is it positive or negative? Of course, it's positive greater than 0. That means it's always concave up. Always concave up. That means it's always concave up. Okay. So if you get something like this, uh, I'm just making an example. If, for example, you get the second derivative to give us negative 2, so that means this will be always concave down. Always concave down. Okay.
take note of that take note of that okay so that is what we have done and then that is the the curve concave up this side from one to infinity concave down from one to negative infinity all right please take note of that Again, also, that is what we have done. This always gives us positive. So we always have positive. Uh, uh, it's always concave up. Always concave up. Okay, make sure you understand.